All right, Quakey Corner, dude. Thank you very, again very much for joining me for this. And uh, I wanted to just get right into a couple things that I would love to have much more uh, extended and long conversations with you about. Uh, but as sort of just an introduction to where I think a lot of, you know, avenues or, or tributaries that I've seen with this, with this book and this argument over the years have gone, I wanted to raise uh, a couple of them with you. So I'll just read what I, I sent you a, a little while ago and, and see what, what, what you think. I sent, uh, you know, for one question, I was saying, how do you think of those, or how do you think those critical of capitalism should address themselves to the various individuals or movements within the African world? Who have sought to incorporate elements of black capitalism in their work, and I, you know, black capitalism. In, quote. Right. in other words, are there are there important differences in say how Garvey approached capital uh, as opposed to someone like Jay Z? Uh, I know there's a, anyway. What do you think? Just in that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the question, and thanks for um, ha having me be a part of this um, conversation. My initial sense is that uh, I don't think the issue is really capital or capitalism um, per se. I, I think the issue is the, well, the ongoing challenge is, 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 the, is, is, the, is what we do with capital, right? Um, you, know, you and I know the cliche about money's root of all evil and, and is, a, is a bevy of these things floating around in their Twitter-like forms. Um, and I think, they, I think those kinds of cliches, I think completely miss the point in that um, there's human capital. There, there, there's, you know, if, if we were living in an apartment complex and you know, you're short of sugar or, or milk and you come over my spot and I, and I, and I, sh and I share that commodity with you uh, because we have a relationship, a kinship, right? So there's different forms of exchange. Um, and I think there's also the diff distinction between money and currency, right? <laughs> and so these final points that are not simply academic, uh, I think it's lost in, 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 in whether you add the adjective black capitalism or another kind of capitalism. So I think the issue is really capitalism in terms of how people like Garvey um, who would organize, you know, this, um, ideological movement, because really about a movement of, of, of a redemption, right? And I think people also miss the fact that Garvey wasn't about back to Africa. It was about um, decolonizing Africa in, in, in the phrase Africa for the African, meaning not Africa, not for the European. And so as a part of that decolonization process, his, his issue was that one has to marshal the human capital, the resources, right? And that's why the movement was so popular including the likes of um, Earl Little, who was Malcolm X's father. Uh, my father, in fact, you know, in Jamaica was a guard guide as well. And so I think people being marshaled as, as resources to be able to decolonize, or in this case, um, you know, set free those structures that impede people's uh, lives being lived on their own terms. And so um, I think if, if we, can use you know, this wonderful uh, work of yours to be able to declutter how we think about capital, right? Not simply as an economic means of exchange or a store for um, value, but more so in terms of our relationships, right? Because um, ultimately, human existence is about the challenge of coexisting, right? How are we, how are we gonna live on this, on this rock called the earth, right? <laughs> Now, right, we see right. Now, right, right, exactly. And so, I think a person like Jay Z sees accumulation, you know, of capital rather than the the you know um, using capital to maximize human experience. And this this is how you know my family and I look at capital, where whatever monies, which is not really you know different than currency, whatever monies that I get through my employer and after taxes. Uh, I'm trying to use that to maximize my time on this, you know, on earth with my family, right? So I'm less about accumulation. I'm about using it to enable, right? So a person like Jay-Z, he is accumulating, whereas Garvey, I, I think the accumulation was a means to enabling this thing called decolonizing Africa. And that's why we can't get to this, you know, very crucial, um, you know, conversation unless we declutter 
I think a lot of the assumptions and cliche like thinking we have about capital. Well, I really appreciate that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have at least somewhat of a conversation with you and others about this is because there's sometimes, you know, in the years I've been trying to make this argument about buying power and making reference to the various people who have made some sort of use of the concept, even as I'm critical of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes people uh, assume that I'm dismissing Garvey or being critical of him in his entirety. Uh, any more th as I would be any more or more so than I might be when I'm saying that Malcolm X also at one point adopted the concept as did Du Bois uh, in his own way and and then sometimes they say well you're saying are you saying that Garvey is just like Jay Z or just like some <laughs> other and I'm saying no I'm saying no, that's not what I'm saying so I, I, I'm that's one of the reasons why I wanted to to, to sort of tease this out uh, um, a little bit. Somewhat similarly is the other question that I wanted you to, to comment on a little bit, because this comes up certainly with me all the time, uh, particularly as I have tried to engage the diaspora about how this concept or this, my argument might apply to where, where we find Africans uh, are on the planet. So anyway, so I said one issue I've confronted in engaging discussions of what I'm calling the myth of black buying power is that I'm arguing in favor of a greater focus on public policy or politics, whereas for so many, the belief is that economics are somehow separate and primary, particularly when looking at differences in the diaspora where often continental Africans have a different view of government than Africans in the U.S. Uh, and just again, just quickly, not for you, but for anyone else, that what I'm saying here is just that there's this broad, uh, uh, Stereotype of reality often, you know, that, that the, the, the struggle here in the United States often necessitated involving the federal government to protect against the, the local and the smaller and the, the, the private businesses. Whereas on the continent, there seems to be a different attitude post in the so-called post-colonial era of saying we need more private uh, uh, ownership and business uh, as opposed to the corrupt government that we've been so unfortunately used to. So. What I'm saying in the book that I think we need to focus here, at least in the U.S., on public policy to get the political redistribution of the wealth we all create. Sometimes people say, but you're missing the point, you know, and, and we and, and we got to get our money right, and then we can engage politics. I'm saying, well, there's a relationship there. Anyway, so what do you think about any of or all of that? Right. Well, uh, that's a great set of questions. Um, a few thoughts. Um, what One is this concept that that people who studied the history of Africa you know, should be familiar with, which is the idea that uh, of people and wealth, right? That is, there's wealth in people, meaning wealth is measured by people, where the, uh, you and I are both fathers, and so um, having children are indices of wealth, right? Uh, and so the concept of wealth in people, meaning that wealth is not measured, again, by the accumulation, right? And even the overaccumulation to the point where it gets really absurd that people have, you know, five homes, um, twelve bedrooms, three cars, um, eight pools, and you can only sleep in one bedroom at a time. And so it gets very, you know, it gets absurd, uh, meaning the accumulation of capital, because there isn't the notion of wealth in people, but wealth in accumulation of something uh, to be used uh, almost like a blunt instrument um, to ruin or undermine other people to accumulate more. And so um, the concept of wealth in people, I, I think, would be certainly one that would resonate um, because it fits into, you know, you know, discussions about policy, being how do we address the, the sort of material, but also, you know, the affective and emotion and for me, the relational um, aspect of, of, of human existence, right? In other words, um, what's the point of accumulation? I mean, really, what, what's the point of accumulation? Um, Jeff Bezos has so much money, he can't buy anything that is available to be purchased on this planet, right? That's how absurd it gets, right? Uh, we think about accumulation. So again, I just hard back to the, you know, the previous um, discussion we had about 
Uh, what's really the um, you know the the, the point of, of of accumulation if if in fact we see capital only as uh, a, a, a reserve, a store uh, of, of value, of, of money, so to speak. But if we see, I think, you know, um, capital as, as currency, meaning something that can be much more uh, mutable, much more flexible, then I think in the broader African world, uh, what you have, therefore, is thinking about policy in terms of how to affect people's lives, um, you know, in a broad manner, right? Um, because we don't live in villages, <laughs> in a sense, right? Uh, at least here in the States. Um, but I think we, we can also learn from, you know, the, um, the way that government works and doesn't work in the African continent, whereby you have a series of kleptocratic governments, right? That basically seem to siphon off wealth from people and therefore, you know, uh, exploit human capital, you know, for the benefit, again, of accumulation. And so, for example, there's this one brother who recently passed away. He was the president uh, for Zambia. And w when he passed, there was an inventory of his goods. And he had, um, you know, hundreds of tailor-made ties from Italy uh, of suits, um, probably about 50 pairs of, of, of tailor-made and the finest, you know, leathers from Europe uh, of patent leather shoes. He had trunks, you know, just full of just clothing. I mean, his inventory was really an autopsy of the absurdity of accumulation. But of, of course, on the flip side, it, it, it is also the, um, the cannibalism of African populations, right? Because he, like many others, uh, had fed into the notion that capital is about accumulation at the, at the expense of human lives and their ruin. Right. But again, if, if we I think refocus the conversation to see, you know, capital as, you know, not simply a store of value, but as a means of human relationships where the relationship becomes more valuable than the actual commodity, quantification of the relationship. Right. So when we think about commodification relationship, we're thinking about you know, wage workers. Right. You and I both work in the academy. Our our energies, our intellectual, you know, wealth. Right. <laughs> is commodified, you know, in the book, in journals. And we get a few percentage points, you know, from that are called royalty, right? In fact, in fact right. <laughs> and so our lived experiences are, are, are really, you know, the testimonial to the sheer absurdity of capital as accumulation. So I think, you know, just, just in terms of our thinking, you know, to be able to declutter that, and get to, I think, a, a way of dealing with policy, of dealing with politics, that's basically about, you know, our human relationships, right? How do we relate? Um, whereby capital isn't really a buffer, but capital becomes an enabler, you know, of those relationships. Now, of course, you're gonna have conflict because some people um, say, look, you know, um, you know, I want to accumulate because accumulation, you know, uh, in this current political world climate, you know, has the blunt force effect of, of, of essentially impacting people, however those wheels of capital will see fit. Um, I think our, our responsibility, I think what your book provides us with is a platform to rethink that world. In other words, this, 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 this world that's being proposed <laughs> um, isn't the only option. <laughs> right on. Hey, man, thank you very much. Listen, you know, I, I know we both claim happily uh, uh, the Dr. James Turner tree of Africana uh, studies, or however to put it. And yes. there's one thing he's always, that he said that always stuck with me. He said the one thing he, he regretted about his generation's approach to economics and money and accumulation was that they missed the key question, which he asked of us, which is, or a point he raised to us, which is it's not, uh, whether you can earn a hundred thousand, it's whether you can earn that but live off of thirty. Mm, yeah. And the idea, I think, at least as I took it, was how are you going to redistribute and make that that accumulation or those earnings work for a greater number than just yourself uh, or your immediate So I mean, anyway. Again, Dr. Quasi Connor, thank you very much for for for, for this conversation. I appreciate you. Man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.